reporting an outrage. A commanding officer in the United States Space Force has been relieved of duty for criticizing Marxism infiltrating our armed forces. Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Lomayer has been relieved of his duties pending an investigation. Lomayer served for 14 years in the United States Air Force before joining Space Force. He's written a self-published book called Irresistible Revolution, Marxism's Goal of Conquest and the Unmaking of the American Military. He appeared on a podcast to discuss this book on May 7th. He was relieved of his duties as commander of the 11th Space Warning Squadron at Buckley Air Force Base in Colorado on Friday, May 14th, by order of Lieutenant General Stephen Whiting. The Military Times reported this about the general's decision. Quote, this decision was based on public comments made by Lieutenant Colonel Lohmeyer in a recent podcast. Lieutenant General Whiting has initiated a command-directed investigation on whether these comments constituted prohibited partisan political activity, end quote. And to my knowledge, Colonel Lohmeyer's book and interview deals with the dangers of Marxism and its infiltration into the United States military. Now, I've not read the book yet, but I was unaware that condemning Marxism officially reflected criticism of one of the political parties here in the United States. General Whiting appears to be thinking that, well, criticizing Marxism indicts one of our two political parties. That might be news to that party that has been trying to keep that little nugget under wraps for the majority of their voters for quite some time. Colonel Lomayer, by all accounts, is a whistleblower. Sadly, he appears to be suffering the same fate as most whistleblowers today. If the whistle is being blown on left-wing extremists who are compromising the safety of our families, communities, and country. From the AMA to our local cops to the U.S. military, will anyone in Congress step forward to protect those who are trying to inform Americans of the impending danger posed by the cancer that is left-wing extremism? My next guest says he was removed from his command in the U.S. military after sounding the alarm about the infiltration of Marxism into the military. Joining me now for an exclusive TV interview is U.S. military lieutenant colonel and author of Irresistible Revolution, Marxism's Goal of Conquest and the Unmaking of the American Military, uh, Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Lohmeyer. Uh, sir, welcome to the, to the Chris Salcedo Show. Appreciate your service. Before we get to your removal, since you are on active duty, U.S. military requires that we say this. Here's the quote. We're going to put it up on the screen for you. The views expressed are those of the author and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the Department of the Air Force, the Department of Defense, or the United States government. Now, let's get back to the in interview here, sir. Now, I'll give the folks a brief summary of what you're seeing as it pertains to Marxist thought infiltrating the U.S. armed forces. Chris, first off, thanks for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Uh, I was prepared sure. to read that statement, in fact, uh, if you hadn't said it. And I just wanted to point out up front that that's a statement that I've included three times in my book that I've just self-published. Uh, it's in the uh, copyright page, it's in the uh, front matter, and it's in the introduction. Um, but uh, back in February of this year, just several months ago, uh, when the services were directed to do a, an extremism stand-down day by the Secretary of Defense, a part of the guidance memorandum that he had issued to all of the service members was that our oath to the Constitution and our obligation to the American people that we owe to them was to stand up against extremist ideologies and expose those extremist ideologies that cause division in the workplace. That was a February 5th memorandum that was sent to all the force and that each service member had that obligation. And in so doing, we'd be standing up for one another. And I've included that statement in the introduction of my book as well. Uh, and to your point, uh, as a commander, uh, I'm in a unique position to engage with a lot of people in the service. Uh, I've seen both white airmen and guardians, black airmen and guardians, and every other race, every other political affiliation, Republican, Democrat, start to complain about losing a determination or desire to stay in the service long term because they're tired of political partisanship within the Department of Defense. And so my book is essentially an invitation to senior leaders, to every service member to knock off political partisanship, to maintain our obligation to be apolitical. And I condemn all forms of extremism, uh, whether they're right wing, left wing, or anything in between. Uh, if it results in conduct that undermines good order and discipline or the morale of our armed forces that doesn't belong in the services. Give us one example of the, uh, a Marxist infiltration 
into the, uh, the Space Force or the Air Force, I'm not sure where you witnessed it. Give us uh, one example so the folks at home know what, what you're talking about. Sure, thank you. Well, one of the things that I've experienced uh, here at my own base, and I know it's not unique to my base, is that as in preparation for some of our diversity and inclusion training or our discussions on race, one of the things that we've been asked to do is watch videos that I personally consider anti-American. They're based on premises that are outlined in the New York Times 1619 project, which insists that our country is evil. And I reject that. Uh, the premise or the basis of all of our diversity and inclusion trainings, and I'm not opposed to diversity or inclusion, although it depends on how we define terms, the premise or basis of all of that should be the foundational ideals that we have codified in the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, not critical race theory, which uh, makes race the view or the lens through which the entire world is interpreted. And so these videos that we've had to watch uh, here at our base uh, teach just that, that uh, certain groups are evil or are oppressors, which is uh, specifically rooted in Marxism. Uh, based on the color of their skin or any number of other affiliations that they have, or as critical race theorists might define it, intersectionalities. And that's simply unacceptable. And so I've made that clear in my own unit that uh, we don't discriminate based on politics, race, sex, et cetera, which is incidentally the, Depart the Department of Defense's policy and law. Uh, and yet to point out Marxism, as you pointed out before we started uh, having a conversation, it surprises me that uh, exposing and attacking critical race theory and Marxism as deemed politically partisan behavior, because it's to imply that some part of our domestic political spectrum is necessarily Marxist. Uh, and I think that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. uh, Marxism is anti-American, and we spent a great deal of treasures and blood and iron during the last half a century combating that very ideology. In full disclosure, folks, reservists and former active duty personnel have reached out to us on The Chris Salcedo Show alleging similar conduct that you just heard uh, the colonel talking about right there. By the way, Lieutenant General Whiting says you were removed pending an investigation because not of the book, but of the podcast you appeared on. He is alleging that you got partisan. Is that true? I don't believe that it is. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you, anyone who speaks about these issues necessarily touches upon politics or po political ideology. I acknowledge that right up front in the beginning of my book. Uh, to your point, I don't think that uh, Space Force or Air Force leadership or Department of Defense leadership have ever had an opportunity to read my book before being relieved of command. I've never spoken with any leadership in my chain of command or uh, in the Department of Defense about the contents of my book since it's been published. I don't know that they would have had the opportunity to get their hands on it quickly enough. Uh, but I also disagree with the idea that I've been politically partisan. Uh, I've been largely apolitical in most of my adult life. I participate in the political process. I don't care what the po political views of my, my fellow service members are, the young airmen and guardians that I was a commander for. Uh, I don't care what their religion or non-religious views are, because that has nothing to do with their oath to the, obligation, uh, their oath to the Constitution. And uh, frankly, they're entitled to their beliefs and their, and their opinions. And so when we start to see within the services a break or a fracture of the force because people are being trained that certain groups are oppressors and others are oppressed, that's when it's time to speak up and identify, as the Secretary of Defense invited us to do, uh, extremist ideological views that are divisive. And so that's what I've attempted to do with the book. Well, I wanted to ask you about the book because I can understand that you're sitting there and you're seeing all this stuff going on and you want to let the folks at home know uh, because it compromises the safety and security, in my opinion, the safety and security of the United States, the people of the United States. However, there's the downside to that. By revealing it to the, the people of the United States, you're also tipping off our enemies that this kind of nonsense is going on. Did you have any trepidation about, about that being a double-edged sword? Not in the least, and here's why. Our enemies are very aware that this is going on in the United States, specifically China. There's nothing more that uh, Xi Jinping or the Chinese Communist Party would like more than to have uh, U.S. citizens, first off, uh, worst of all, U.S. service members in uniform getting at one another's throats because they are starting to entertain divisive and competing and fundamentally incompatible narratives of American history, for example, uh, with, with one another. 
Uh, and so I have no trepidation about the idea that we're somehow making the world aware of our, what I'll call in my own personal view, buffoonery. Uh, the whole world is on notice. They've been watching us very closely. My hope in writing the book, however, is that we'll begin to start a dialogue. People will take courage because they've sensed that something is off and now they can be educated a little bit better to understand the uh, lineage of ideas that we're seeing show up now in 2020, 2021, and it precedes that, in fact, by many decades. Colonel, I appreciate the service to this country, and I appreciate you coming on to the Chris Alcedo Show to let the folks know at home what's going on. Uh, keep in touch with us, and we'll talk to you soon, sir. It's, it's fantastic to see you. From our, our military to our police, to dedicated public servants, they're, they're afraid. Afraid to come forward about these left-wing toxic policies that put us all at risk. Should the Republican Party in Congress be looking to protect whistleblowers like the Lieutenant Colonel? We absolutely should. I find it uh, very interesting that the left always wants to protect whistleblowers. They always want them to co go forward when they talk about Republican politicians. But when it goes to something as, frankly, as disastrous to a military unit um, as critical race theory, where you're pitting literally one race of servicemen against another behind this radical notion of the oppressed and the oppressors, we have to protect these whistleblowers. I want to personally thank the lieutenant colonel for stepping forward and having not just the courage in his walk as a member of our armed forces, but in his walk as an American citizen to tell the truth about what's happening behind behind closed doors with our military personnel. This is outrageous. And whether it's anybody in the military or even teachers and uh, administrators in our schools across America, it is time for Americans to come forward and speak the truth about this radical agenda that is moving through too many schools and too many ranks of our military and, frankly, too many departments in our government that is critical race theory. Americans need to come forward and tell the truth about this. We cannot have this kind of divisive ideology run rampant through through the institutions of our country. Congressman, I'm hoping you could take the video of, of the Lieutenant Colonel's appearance right here on the Chris Salcedo Show and, and show it to some of your colleagues because, as you rightly point out, critical race theory and the cancerous cancel culture is infiltrating aspects of American life where it doesn't belong. From the American Medical Association, we had a story about that, to our military, to our government-run schools. Listen to what the White House Press Secretary Jen Psaki had to say about critical race theory. Although I don't think that, I don't think we would think, we believe that uh, educating uh, the youth and next, then leaders of, the future leaders of the country on systemic racism is indoctrination. That's actually responsible. Responsible, she says, Congressman. CRT She's is the taxpayer funding of hate with underpinnings of Marxism and collectivist thought. Yet Americans who don't support it, and we're forced to fund it. Is this a federal fight or a state fight as you see it? Uh, unfortunately, I think this is all levels of government, whether you're elected official on the local level in your city council, county commission, in state government, or here at the federal level, everybody needs to engage in this. Because let's be very clear about what's happening here, Chris. You have people in, in powers, in pow different power levels at our government who think it is okay to go down this line with this type of theoretical social science. It is theoretical social science. Chris, if you want to talk about the history of the country, let's actually talk about the history of the country. Let's have a full understanding of the history of our country. Let's teach it to our kids. I have no problem with that, and frankly, do none of my colleagues on my side of the aisle. But what I object to, and many Republicans object to, is to take the history of our country and then weaponize it and radicalize it to mean that in today's America that we are systemically racist, that there are people who still seek to oppress and subject black Americans in our country, that is simply not true. And if, if your entire mission is to push that through the entire body politic, you are actually being destructive of our country. What we need to be doing right now is come together. What we need to do is have the unity that President Biden talked about when he was inaugurated, but we haven't seen much of since. And by continuing this and pushing it through all levels, and then for Jen Psaki to stand there and be so smug, acting like it's okay, that nothing's going wrong here, that's not not true because we already have parents and teachers in school districts across America are speaking up about this. They don't like what they're seeing, and I'm proud that the lieutenant colonel has done the same. 
All right, turning to Mad Maxine Waters, she's been reportedly abusing the air marshal program, as other lawmakers have, when flying from D.C. to Minneapolis to threaten the local community there with violence alongside BLM and the George Floyd case. According to the Air Marshal National Council, Waters was already accompanied by, get this, two armed Capitol Police, two U.S. Secret Service agents, when she allegedly requested two air marshals and two more marshals after that, upon touchdown to escort her to the airport, or inside the airport, putting the rest of the flying public at risk to divert uh, resources away from them to accommodate her. What do you say about that, Congressman? I, I think it's outrageous. Uh, Congresswoman Waters, like you said, she did have support and protection from Capitol Police and other agencies. But then to redirect air marshals off the flights that they should have been on, to me, is, is a complete disaster. It, go, it, go, it takes apart our very national security apparatus that all of us are sworn to protect up here on Capitol Hill. And members, we need to look into this. You cannot have members of Congress because they're trying to go somewhere else. By the way, not going to their district, just unilaterally laterally reallocating air marshal members just so you feel more protected. That should never be tolerated. This is something that the administration should be looking at because the administration is actually charged with the defense of our nation. That is Joe Biden's job. So I'm calling on him to look into this. He needs to make sure that our air yeah. marshals don't move just because I asked for it or Congressman Waters or any other member of Congress. They are there to protect the American people, not to just protect members of Congress. I think it's outrageous. Yeah, that's what, that's what got me. She diverted uh, resources away from protecting normal everyday Americans to protect her worthless rear end when she already had plenty of protection. Congressman, appreciate the time as always here on the Chris Salcedo Show. When we come back hey, I'm Rob Finnerty. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.